Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grave New World, our Buffy the Vampire Slayer TTRPG. I have with me all of my wonderful players this week, and um, this week is a special uh, intro section where we're going to tell you about ourselves, and then we're going to tell you about ourselves some more. Everyone is going to tell you a fun fact about themselves. My fun fact is, well, first of all, I am Chris. I am an online artist. Um, I forgot to get my link, so I'll get those in a minute. But the fun fact about me today is that I collect novelty erasers. Popcorn Bat Kyle. Popcorn Bat Kyle. It's just Bat Kyle. Um, <laughs> howdy, folks. I'm Bat Kyle. I play Jacob King, your friendly neighborhood half demon stoner oracle. Um, and currently, nothing else anywhere else. Uh, my fun fact about myself, I have many of them, but I will say that one of the big ones is uh, my mutant power is I can plug my nose without actually having to pinch it closed or anything. I can just flex a muscle <laughs> and shut it off, which is useful when I clean the cat boxes. Um, <laughs> and then besides that, you can't observe me anywhere else because I don't want you to. And over to Bison. Hi, I'm Bison underscore Stonefist. Um, I am a regular contributor here. Um, on Tuesdays, I run the Cyberpunk Red campaign, Carnage Heights. We are currently on a little bit of a hiatus because I'm having a creative drought because the city is on fire. So, <laughs> um, my fun fact. Oh, I also play Sid Brimlock on the Saturday game, a necrobatic game, Dead to Rights. Uh, it's a great fun. You should watch sometime. Uh, my fun fact is I met my now wife at my very first job. I was the fry cook. She worked drive through. Um, right. I'll say next <laughs> as Kevin draws a heart. Um, next, we will go with Mana Queen. Hi, everybody. I am Mana. Uh, currently, you can find me here. I'm very much like Kyle. I am here Monday nights playing uh, the Slayer to our campaign, Ash. Uh, currently, I'm nowhere else. Just right here, Monday nights. Uh, <laughs> so that's where you can find me. Uh, sometimes I want to be perceived. Sometimes I don't. So I'm not as intense as Kyle is. But um, let's see. My fun fact is that I once broke my arm while swimming. So that's fun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everybody's always just, how do you do that? And I just say, well, have you looked at me? Uh, <laughs> so, oh, no. Yeah, so yeah, I once broke my arm while swimming. That's my fun fact. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. So off to our lovely Eddie Elfman. Hi, my name is Eddie Elfman. I'm an Edmonton-based voice actor. I forgot that we were going to do a fun fact about ourselves. I have an avocado fun fact. I guess I'll get to that later. Um, Monday evenings, you can find me here at the same time, the same uh, time of the week as well, playing Miss Cheryl Daw. Uh, this week on Fridays, uh, at this time, uh, you can find me playing uh, Going Viral, a st Stealing Stories for the Devil TTRPG, where I'm going to be playing Tyler, the 13-year-old who's just trying to get by. Um, and then just so happens that uh, uh, tomorrow, when there, I do not believe that there's going to be any uh, any any carnage heights. I'm going to be appearing, guest appearing on another Twitch channel called Double Crit Fail, uh, where we're going to be playing uh, Pirate Borg, a uh, a very serious pirate tabletop RPG where I'm going to die, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So come uh, watch that. I, I think it's going to be more or less same time, maybe a half hour earlier on that channel. So make sure to go give them a like and follow and show some support as I venture out into the fresh new world. Um, oh, sorry, the fun fact. Um, so I haven't had a lot of projects going on uh, except for this one. So I'm very glad that I get to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to be a dad soon. So I am very enthusiastic. And the baby about today is the size of an avocado. So back to you, director. Congratulations. That's awesome. Wow. Oh, that's Good thing. amazing. Thank you. Good that's thing a you went last. Fuck. <laughs> you can't top that shit. Uh, oh, like, I'm not oh, having a baby, gosh. but I can plug my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my arm while swimming. I was like, wow. how much of an asshole am I going to be if I do this? No. Very 
that's incredible. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That was awesome. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're missing somebody. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Yep. No, we're yes. not. We're not doing. We're not doing the one you suggested. But you got to do one, Kevin. <laughs> oh, Kevin! Oh, come so on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, phoning it in, but fine. Um. Oh. Oh. He oh. said that. Uh, he learned today. He learned that. Uh, How to spell his own name? Friends and, is going and he's to just be there. really. Turns out there's a silent Q in there. You had no idea. Yeah. It Quevin. starts with a W and it's Q in the middle. Quevin. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we're gonna play the game now. All I right. wonder how interesting so... it is to hear a one-sided conversation with the director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh um Kevin, shut up. Anyway. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, that was harsh. Uh, so last week, <laughs> um, Ash felt understandably somewhat embarrassed after their encounter with Eugenie in the training room, and so they spent their next few evenings training intensely, trying to replicate the things they saw, and thinking about what Eugenie said. And between classes, training, and patrol each night, and their job at the Inflated Park, the signs of overwork became apparent. And by the weekend, Julian urged them to take a break. So. Julian uh, had Cheryl and Jack, or Cheryl and Ye uh, go on patrol with Eugenie, and they invited Jack along. So uh, during the daytime, they did some research on where they needed to go, more on the uh, Orville Chemical Company, found that it was uh, actually is now defunct, and they decided to go uh, check out the abandoned building on the edge of town. Everyone met up and they investigated the building where they were, uh, they discovered lots of information, but were also attacked by several vampires. They bested the vampires easily. Uh, Eugenie and Jack had a uh, a conversation in which it was revealed that Eugenie very obviously knew what Jack was, but she didn't out him, strangely. Um, on the way back, uh, Danny, blah, Cheryl and Ye spotted a mysterious figure getting something from an alley next to a butcher. Ye just dismissed it and buggered right off. Cheryl took a second look and saw that it was Danny getting blood from the butcher. She um, blocked the alley with her car and confronted Danny, and uh, they are due for a conversation in Cheryl's car. Ye went home, Jack went home, Jack had a terrifying nightmare about probably the worst moment in his life. And that's where we left off. So now, Cheryl. You and your prom. (laughs) (laughs) The worst moment of his life. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, director. Danny has willingly gotten into your car and is assumingly willing to have a conversation with you, what do you do? Well, I make sure that we uh, get on the road in the middle of the night. As the street lights pass, she's going to stare off into the distance, try to maybe seem as, as cool as she can, and she's going to, all right. <clears throat> so, strangely enough, a vampire of your stature, you referenced uh vin diesel so clearly you know something about pop culture so let's see if uh, i can try you for another one the cinematic and and literary masterpiece that is susan collins the hunger games we're gonna play a game called real or not real not sure if you're familiar i get the gist all right you kill people for fun no sorry what was that not real not real You drink people's blood. Not real. You lied to us about whether or not you drink people's blood. Real. This was a lot more simplistic and easily answered than I originally intended it to be. So, all right. And she's going to veer off and go 
probably just into like a Den Denny's parking lot. Talk and roll, Danny. Park the car. <laughs> uh, and turn over. Make sure that her hand's like close to a, a clutch that's in the back seat as she looks at him, trying to like analyze what is up with him. Um, and he's gonna go. So why did you lie to us? If everyone knew that I was effectively neutered, they would have come for me ages ago. I don't want to die. So your street cred needed to, to stay elevated? Essentially. What do you mean by neutered? What do you think I mean by neutered? They cut your balls off. How about metaphorically speaking? See, that's where I'm having an issue with the metaphor. You're saying that your inability to kill innocent people and drink their blood makes you neutered. As a vampire, it effectively eliminates my core functions. So I would say the term neutered metaphorically applies. Why can you not drink other people's blood? Because it makes you feel bad on the inside or because you physically can't? A little bit of both, I guess. I mean, it does physically hurt me. It physically harms you to drink a living being's blood. No. What about a dead person's blood? Dead people's blood is gross. You have a bucket full of cow blood. It's pig blood, but thanks. I don't, is that better? Not really, no. But, um, you know, if we're going for real or not real, let's be accurate here. I don't know why I hurt when I try to kill people. I think about, you know, what the moral quandaries are of some kind, because obviously the person I was had morals. Or so, you know, everyone says vampires can remember their, you know, their host's memories and things but they can't feel their host's emotions because there's no emotions because they're they're demons now but i think about emotions and i feel pain i think about killing someone and i feel pain I think about other things i feel pain so all right all right maybe just humor me and she's going to point a pistol square in his face and go, try and harm me. Take, take this gun away from me right now or I'm going to shoot you in the face. He takes a sort of reflexive breath in, even though he doesn't need to breathe. Like he's preparing to sigh, but he doesn't. Okay. He's clearly thinking, but... Let me, let me roll. Which one's Danny? This one's Danny. Did it go? You mean you weren't prepared for Cheryl to try and shoot Danny in the face? Did no, anyone be prepared for what Cheryl is about to do next? No. It's not triggered. Oh, that's why it's not triggering. There we go. I can tell you why it's not triggering. <laughs> Safety's on. That's that's appropriate. So he he reaches for your wrist and goes to twist your arm so that you drop the gun. And you hear him go, ah! Do I believe him? 
<laughs> is he Make play me... acting? Is he acting? I mean, make me a perception notice check. Okay. That is not very high. That is only a nine. I'm going to say that when he's saying all these... um using all these examples and saying that, that vampires can't be people. They can't have emotions and they can't remember their existence or, or the, their feelings. We're going to say that the, the editing team interstitched our last moments with Estia. And I'm going to give her a, a righteous fury to try and figure out whether or not he's actually telling the truth. To add a plus 10 to that to make it 19. Um... If you'll allow that. Is it righteous fury is plus five to attack actions heroic uh, feet is plus it's heroic to feet roll. yeah all right okay so tell me tell me how this is heroic justify it for me that's a very good question <laughs> she's trying to protect her her friends She's she's thinking about how deeply Estia not being who she was anymore affected Ye and affected Julian and affected Ash. And she's thinking, if I don't, if I let this son of a bitch, this snake into our midst, what type of person am I going to be? And if this is the moment where I find out that, that he's telling, he's lying to us or he's telling the truth, then I feel I feel satisfied by putting myself at risk. She's heroically putting herself out there to to dictate whether or not this is the truth. You end up with a 19. And you look at a person who had to Go game face to deal with the pain you just put him in. He took real damage to do that. She's gonna. And Unfortunately, see, this plastic revolver face. doesn't work the same way, so I'll, I'll <laughs> I uncock it. But in order to do that, I need to fire it. Real Go ahead. You see his game face melt back away, but he's still, his face is still kind of contorted in pain, and he's incredibly tense. All right. All right. I, I think that um, I can understand you a bit better. Not this feeling, does it apply really to, uh, well, this, this um, affliction or, or limitation? I don't necessarily agree with you calling yourself new to just maybe a forced conscience. Does it apply to uh, to demons or, or ghouls or ghasts of, of, of every variety? Just humans. Just living, soulful people. Do you Our think that you have a soul? Unlikely, considering I'm a vampire. That's what we're taught, right? Vampires don't have souls. Why would I have a soul? I don't know. 
if there was a way for you to undo this affliction, would you? Yeah. I would... I would want my fucking life back, yeah. I'd rather be dead than this. And he... There's spite in his words. So if you were to... Um... But let's let's come up with another possibility. Let's say that you unshackle yourself. You remain a vampire. You can harm other people. Is that something that you'd look forward to as well? Would you take that opportunity if the Alices were to, to give it to you? He thinks again, and with that residual 19, as he's thinking, you see him tense up his hands sort of writhing into bald fists as if he's taking more damage just to think about this question and he says that is not a question I know how to answer because thinking of the truth made you reason pain because thinking of what's right and wrong is not something I take pleasure in because of said pain yes because moral quandaries hurt I can't tell you whether I would want to continue being a vampire. The reason I continue, the reason I don't stake myself is because I can't stake myself. It hurts to do that too. It hurts to do everything. It hurts to think. It hurts to laugh. It hurts to smile. It hurts to frown. It hurts to cry. It hurts to want revenge. It hurts to want nothing at all. I'm not trying to push my pain on you, but you asked. You want to know what my life is like? It's all pain for eternity. Because some couple who thought that their demon forms weren't good enough for them decided that I should be a guinea pig and take away my whole life so that they could experiment make themselves gods so yeah i don't know what do you want me to say he's like eyeing the door like the door handle and not making eye contact i wanted for you to look me in the eyes and tell me the truth Oh, he did Because then I could. Then. I can. Likely work with you. All right. I'd go help you get um, some more blood, I suppose. It's all right. There's, there's plenty in there. I'll just pop up in a couple of days. It's fine. Well, I didn't make a promise to you. Okay. And sure. Kant says that you should live your life by axioms. Uh, actually, if you ever want to, uh, if you ever want to move forward about this whole more quandary thing, if you think of just an axiom is. Uh, people should not be in pain or I should not inflict pain on people and I should not lie. That'd be a great place to start. And she's going to give him a bit of like a uh, philosophy 100 <laughs> lecture. She tries to, He's tries to back like, to uh, butcher shop. Stare ahead as she does that. Like literally every, every philosophy 100 student ever. Yep. Uh, it's the first year psych students you got to watch out for though. <laughs> you don't have to watch out for them they make their presence known uh, 
Um, Anyways, she's going to very ragefully uh, help him buy some more uh, pig blood. Maybe set up a butcher okay. box account or something so he doesn't have to go out and get this sorted all the time. He can just, you know, get some nice blood delivered to his door. Okay. And okay. Uh, blood whatever gosh. that that dollar is going to be, dollar amount's going to be, and then she's going to very angrily drive home. At, at at a elevated speed in the middle of the night, listening to some girly pop. Go to bed. You hear a whoop, whoop as you like see flashing lights behind you. That's where we're gonna cut it off. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Rewinding a little bit. To the start of the night, Ash has been resting the whole day. Um, what have they been doing to sort of recuperate? Uh, well, first of all, they sleep till like at least twelve thirty, uh, maybe one o'clock. Like they just they've been pushing themselves so hard that they uh, crash. And just probably kind of like that animation from the Princess and the Frog where she just onto the bed, you know, uh, that's Ash. And Ash doesn't move, I think maybe at one point around like 4 a.m. They might like actually crawl into bed, but like they're just out till 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Uh, then they put their phone on do not disturb except for emergency contacts, which includes... Yeah, and Cheryl and Julian. Uh, but other than that, obviously, uh, but other than that, no, no social media, no nothing. Um, they probably do a decent amount of stretching because they hurt. They're sore. Right? Uh, so they're trying to stretch it all out as their body recuperates. Um, Definitely noticing that their body is recuperating faster than normal, than they're used to, right? Because um, it's not entirely new at this point, but it's still a little bit new, and they're still a little bit yeah. shocked of like, whoa, okay, it's happening a little bit faster. Uh, probably go and just like lay in the sun a little bit uh, to kind of like almost like recharge, literally, like a solar battery. Just. <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> and so they're doing that and then unironically they probably go for a light run because like running helps them just kind of work on things in their brain uh not like forcing it but like just like yeah just jog you know, run clear the brain process yeah yeah process everything that's been happening um and then they probably around like five, six o'clock. So flop on the couch uh, with a big old bowl of popcorn and toss on whatever, you know, comfort binge watching. And they are just like chilling. And but they're like, every, like probably like every hour or so, they kind of like get up and pace. Like once they start feeling more rested, like they're getting antsy. Mm -hmm. they, can't just, they just can't sit still they just can't uh, but Julian's like go back <laughs> that's that's Ash's reaction to it. at first Ash is like got it heard yeah say less and then once they feel rested they're like Meh. but they're like okay <laughs> you know uh, so <laughs> yeah. I'm actually gonna rewind again to that part where you're in the sun do you have like a like a chair that you're just sort of laying in on like a balcony uh, or something? Yoga mat. How do you imagine? With a towel yoga over mat. It. With a with towel, towel over it. it. Cool. Yeah. There's no like actual cool. lawn chair. It's just yoga mat with a towel. Nothing cool. fancy. <laughs> cool. So as you are, you know, spread out under the sun and stuff, you close your eyes, you you feel the warmth radiating down on you. You see that orange glow through your eyelids and suddenly you feel like you're weightless and then okay. you, 
you feel almost as if you're being turned back up onto your feet and you feel your feet gently land on a solid surface but you're still seeing the sun glowing orange through into your eyes you're still feeling mm-hmm. that heat being you know being beamed onto your skin mm-hmm. what do you do uh well first i open my eyes you know I kind of look around uh because like am I actually standing am I just having some sort of weird vision you find Uh, yourself actually standing you are in kind of a a reflection of where you live but everything is incredibly desaturated and bright, like a light bloom effect on everything. Okay. Okay. Um, do I feel calm? Do I feel stressed? Like, is this scary? Or am I just in like a, a sense of like, I'm laying in the sun, I'm calm. You feel This is totally normal. <laughs> This is this is absolutely not normal, but you don't feel upset or stressed or or worried or scared. You f- feel safe. Okay. Um am I still like on my balcony? Like in a way, you can see kind of the ghost right. like echo of your balcony. But you understand that if you wanted, you could just walk right through it and you wouldn't fall. Okay. Uh, I'm going to close my eyes again and think about my dad's house, like home. And just like, like, can't like, okay, so if I can walk through my balcony, what happens if I just, can I just real quick? You think about your dad's house and what you actually find when you open your eyes again is that you're not at your dad's house. Okay. But you are you are beginning to become surrounded, not in a threatening way, but surrounded by these sort of phantasmal figures. But this time they're in some color and are they like more... kind of like before but not totally they're a little more solid they're less okay. wispy and they're not they're not like those black charcoal smoke creatures it's more like they're echoes of people and right beside you you suddenly see your dad but he doesn't see you. He's just going about his day. He's, you know, doing the dishes for a couple minutes and then he goes and sits down in his chair and turns on the TV. Okay. What happens when I think of Yay? Yay pops up. No, this is Yay's private time. Don't. at five or six or no this was you were planning with cheryl when you did around this, this time 3 p.m oh, okay. or something well, like we're, 3 we're good then. yeah everything's yeah. okay we're fine then all right yeah it's you were three or four you were like ago. with cheryl in the library yeah. all right you go um, to the, the bathroom for 30 minutes yeah you you go ahead doesn't matter um you see yay sort of leaning forward on a table, looking over um, one of those demon maps that Cheryl makes and pointing at different locations. But Ye doesn't see you. Okay. 
uh, Ash is kind of getting an idea, possibly, maybe, of what's happening. Um, Ash is going to think of the dagger, but the missing piece that they need. You see... someone kind of shrouded in they're blurrier you don't you don't mm. know this person but you see them in a small dingy apartment with this dagger sitting by itself on a table and they're just kind of like what you end up doing later they're just pacing back and forth kind of anxiously okay i'm still going to keep thinking about it but i'm going to physically take like eight steps backwards to just maybe back up a little bit pan out if you will okay you just see this wide array of various projections of people you know and people you don't know as you as you pan out you zoom out you see cheryl at the other side of the table with yay and you see danny sleeping because it's the middle of the day and you see jack playing his guitar on the street And then you okay. hear a voice. And it says, into your head, welcome. Does the voice sound familiar? It's hard to place. Sounds okay. Like every voice and no voice you've ever heard. Sounds a little familiar to me. Maybe, possibly, as somebody else who's really good at being everything and nothing at the same time. So, can I try that? Does that, that sound familiar? Make me. A perception notice. Okay. If my sheet will load, hello. That would be great if my sheet would load. Because I don't remember what my values are since we did all those number works last time. Okay. Thank you, Rule 20. Thank you. Okay. Perception, notice. That is going to be a... A what? 13. Sorry. 13. Yes. It, like I said, it sounds familiar to you, but it sounds like a lot of different things that you recognize right. um, kind of like somebody speaking through a voice mixer that's been mixed like a hundred times yes like imagine every person you've ever met sampled and then run through this voice mixer okay uh, uh so you know this voice is welcome and ash tries to focus on the voice itself because ash is like ash thinks of something and I'm like focus on it not of what it, who it is or what it sounds like but like just the voice and say hi while they're focusing on the voice so hopefully they can just it might be maybe hello you've been having trouble reaching me or rather i've been having trouble reaching you ash was just about to ask where have you been trying to reach me my voicemail box is full um, can I take your message personally? 
Don't worry. You'll be safe. That's not helpful. Who are you? I am the one who looks over you. There's a pause as there's like a swallow. This Ash just kind of swallows whatever they were about to say. Because uh, maybe don't antagonize the one that's looking over you. Uh, <laughs> Ash goes, can you help? I look over all of you. All of us. All of you. Well, that didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you're saying is everything has a reason. Everything has a meaning. Very wise. Oh, mysterious voice. I never said that. You take okay. your life into your own hands. Your fate is yours. But I make sure you are okay. Okay. So, why are you here? Why did you, are you just here to tell me that I'm going to be okay? Because I knew that. Did you? Yeah, I'm always okay. If I'm not, I'm dead, so. And that's apparently really hard to do these days. <laughs> you hear this voice chuckle a little bit. You know, the ones you love and care about, they'll be okay too. There's kind of a moment as there's like, not even a moment, it's like a long, maybe half a minute and a couple Ash's eyes water and go yeah sure okay if you say you... so I know exactly what you're thinking and Estia appears in front of you Why? She doesn't say anything, but she reaches out and she takes your hand. Bad, yeah, Ash uh, takes it back. She smiles at you and she beckons you to walk with her. Can you, can, can you talk? Can she talk? Actually, ask Estia, and then <laughs> the voice. Oh, the, the voice. You don't. You don't hear anything from Estia. You don't hear anything from the voice. Estia just you walk with her for a minute or so, not really passing landmarks or buildings or anything, but you feel like you are traveling, and you travel to the cemetery where there is not a grave but an in memoriam to Estia and she sits down on this memorial bench that has been erected And she takes out a book and she starts to happily read. And she looks up at ah. you and she smiles. Ash definitely like heavy swallows and just sits next to her and says, what are you reading? And just kind of like looks over at the book to see what SG is um, reading. It's the vampire book. Uh, is it open to any particular page? Is it? It's open to a page that talks about a 
it's it's very dated it's a very old book but it looks like Estia has flagged sections that mention people who have helped the Slayer in the past. And she leafs through every little sticky tab that she has put and shows you the names of a witch or a warlock who aided the Slayer or, you know, some some coven or or a half demon or even a full demon who made a truce to take down a greater evil with the slayer and then she flips to the back of the book and pulls out a pen from her bag and writes Estia Forrester helped the Slayer. Well, Ash is full blown cr crying at this point. <laughs> um, and Ash is like, yeah, I, I know. Are you, are you trying to tell me that I'm not alone, that I wasn't alone, that I'm not? I, I know. I, yeah. Esther, you helped. Of course you did. I, why is she here? And Ash is kind of like, and then she looks at the desk and is like, not that I don't want you here. I want you here always. I, but, but she turns, she takes <laughs> your head, just like she takes your chin in her two fingers, turns it back to the book, and the words begin to rearrange themselves. Slayer helped Estia Forster. Are you trying to kill me, Chris, right now? Out of character? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I am... I help people. That's what I do. I guess it's... Heard loud and clear. That's why I'm here, is to help people. People like... Estia and Ash takes Estia's hand and just kind of like, you know, very tightly, as tightly as they can without, I mean, Estia, does Estia feel solid? I don't know. But Ash is just very tightly. She's like, yeah, I, I get it. I don't. <sighs> okay. She gives you a hug. And then everything starts to fade again. No, 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 no. The voice speaks up again and says, I know you know you're not alone. But I also know sometimes you feel alone. Every person whose heart you touch is always with you. Whether they're in your world or in mine. Do not be afraid. Before Ash can feel Estia disappear, she just goes like, I miss you. I love you and I'm glad you're okay. Estia nods and then is gone. Does Ash wake up? Or is Ash still floating? Um, once the voice is done saying what it says, Ash feels floaty again. But this time, she's being leaned back into her there, laying, lying down position. And instead of waking up with a start, your eyelids just kind of gently flutter open. Well, Ash files that away. Does Ash remember anything, everything, parts, nothing? Ash remembers all of it. Okay. 
Um, so Ash's eyes flutter open and they are crying IRL, <laughs> not just in floaty space. Um, and that's probably why they go for a run and then pile up on the couch to binge watch and zone out. Um, but they do shoot a text off to A and Cheryl that says, we know how patrol goes. Can't, or that, uh, yeah, just let me know how patrol goes. That's probably all they say. For now. Okay. It's so set in person oh. then. <laughs> yeah. So now we move forward through time. There's no space. We're still in Cleveland. But we managed to make it to Sunday. Ash, you physically at least have sufficiently recovered from your overwork. Yay, you didn't have any bad dreams for once. You just stare at his half empty water bottle. Huh. All right, then. It's a welcome change. Just gonna go in the bathroom, check his bandage. He should be pretty much all healed up by now. Just set that aside, scrub it off, and then just be like, well, Patrol went fine. Vampires found. Vampires killed. Papers and information recovered. Not admitting to any started fires, but fires may have happened. And... Yeah, you were up pretty late with Danny. Um, so you're what? A little tired? A lot of tired? Oh, um, I have an interaction with a police officer, or are we just gonna hand wave that? We're just gonna, we're just gonna hand wave that. That was a, lovely. That was a flavor scene. Lovely. There's a you do brief... you do owe uh two hundred dollars speeding ticket though. I would like to dispute that through role play. You know what? Okay, how are you gonna dispute it? I'm a young, attractive woman that can try to talk her way out of a, a, a ticket, and I will use society's uh, misogyny against itself. Okay. Uh, willpower, influence, plus your attractiveness. All righty. Oh, no. That's such a low roll. Fudge. <laughs> Uh, God damn it, officer. Did I just jinx you? Uh, that'll be uh, 14. Oh, okay. Uh, he's not just gonna let you off with a warning, but he does lower the fee to like 125. I'll say that the reason why I was driving is because I was, I was acting emotional. I found out that my my car was keyed, uh, as is evident that he can see, um, and that's just I oh, had a lapse of judgment. But all right, one hundred twenty five dollars. Fine. And I uh, thank God that he didn't find the handgun under my seat. <laughs> Praise be. All right. Uh, you <laughs> guys... cash never seen needed. Um, guys... Does oh, Cheryl? No. Sorry, no. Does Cheryl say anything back to the text that Ash said after Yay does? Or... Probably when 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 I got back, it'll just say, "Uh, I got some. Uh, <laughs> I got some uh, information about Danny." Patrol went good. Lots of documents to go over. Okay, Ash is going to respond to the text uh, and say, okay, sounds good. And then in the group text with Julian and Jack. Mm, I don't know how much Ash trusts Jack right now. Debatable. I'm as just going to go as, with Julian. 
I don't think Jack's in the group chat yet. Right. I just gave so him, I got numbers and that's about it. Okay. So with I don't think Jack's Cheryl phone would and... support a group chat. <laughs> hey, flip phones can have group texts. It can happen. It's just um, multiple texts. Yeah, that's exactly how it occurs. It just says from yeah. such and such at the, at the top. It just has the number uh, to split. Um, this is right. one of those Anyways. phones that comes in that shitty plastic clamshell. Yeah. That exactly. you need, like, you know, a friggin' K bar to get through. <laughs> okay, so that being said, just with Cheryl, Julian, and Yay, uh, Ash will say, after saying, like, just, just Cheryl and Yay, like a thumbs up, like reaction acting to both with like thumbs up. Uh, Ash will say in that group text, I might have news on the last dagger with a shrug emoji. Just, <laughs> just, just vaguely, just confused. love, love reacts, <laughs> hearts, <fucking laughs> confetti emojis. <laughs> it is that da um... the dancing, the dancing girl. Oh, just all oh, that. Oh, yeah. The Oh, the, the two girls like next trapper. to each other, like, hey. The little trapper <laughs> knob where it zooms in on the guy with the beard, and he after a moment he's like, little good job, <laughs> nod. Uh, also, does 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 this mean we can stake Danny? He it, it means he wants us to stake him after this is all over. I'm on it. I will just sleep. I'm clear. <laughs> yeah. He gets He's out like... one of his little PF Chang's things and just starts scratching Danny. <laughs> yeah, he's called like dibs. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get a you guys have a group text with Julian, right? Yeah. You have Julian, yeah. Julian in that. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. Cheryl, okay. Julian, there's yeah. there's the, the the bigger group text and then there's like the core group text the Julian there's just the not scoops a part of. yeah and like <laughs> the scoops and the scoops plus Julian yep. yeah exactly <laughs> and that um, so one's called get... watches council Sorry. <laughs> 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 you guys um get a text from Julian in the watchers council group text saying he's been trying to figure out how the Ellis's could be using alchemy and science together. Um, and he wants you guys to meet with him later today. All right. I, yeah, I have he's... documents to go over uh, that, that yeah, would be we'll... great to go over in his... Uh... In his office, so, yeah, so sure. all sorts of liberated papers. What we don't have probably burned. Yeah. Um, we're gonna hop over to Jack though. Hey Jack. Jack. Jack wakes up on the floor next to a mostly empty bottle of Cuervo and a tumped over uh highball glass. The ice has melted into the carpet. Yeah, that tracks, doesn't it? Didn't even make Jack... it to the bed this time. Oof. Jack, you wake up to your phone ringing. I grabbed the wrong one first. <laughs> Which one's the wrong one? Um, I'm going to say it's his... Uh... His government phone is the the one he picks up first. Yeah, you hold it up and it's not vibrating. It's not, it's nothing. Uh, it's very much that like high pitched screechy ringtone of an old flip phone. Yeah. He finds it under the chair. Hello. It is your pastor. And he is wondering where the hell you are. Tim. Yeah, sorry. Um, oh, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. Which one am I supposed to be at today? 
the mission or and he's you know he hasn't actually like sat up he's still like on the floor <laughs> talking on the phone like face down pretty much uh he says you need to be at the mission like right now on it sorry had a bad night be there as soon as i can thank you and he like very stressfully hangs up yeah jack closes the phone shit takes a very quick shower bathes himself in axe and uh gets on his dirt bike and goes to the to the mission to the um to do the food bank stuff because that would, would be it's the gospel mission that's mostly what they do is hand out food mm -hmm. so, so the the line for the food bank stuff is is backed up because they're they're already short staffed for yeah. volunteers and things and so when you get there there's practically nonverbal applause because you know there this local community has been getting to know you as you've been you know adjusting mm -hmm. to um the neighborhood and everything and you know they like you you're you're pretty nice to them and you know you you're not all high and mighty or anything the kids the kids like you a lot um they don't like your songs but they like you uh <laughs> They they humor you with your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would have flown twenty years ago was what I'm basing this on. So, yeah. <laughs> they they're like, is there anything newer? You know, like I know there's Reaper. no. Like, hey, like, like we won't we won't tell if you don't play religious music. He looks at him and is like. You guys know Pearl Jam? One kid goes, yeah, I think I know Pearl Jam. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> you know, and... like, um, like Imagine Dragons? Out of if character. If I smoke enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> out of character, Imagine Dragons are actually Mormons. Yeah, so, I know. So, the fact that's so anyways back in were. The were yeah were, there's yeah. a whole thing um but yeah jack's like there's a pause and he thinks and he's like okay think back to boot camp all the kids that didn't make it what did they listen to and he um he looks like okay i don't know the words but here's radioactive <laughs> <laughs> on gu acoustic guitar on acoustic guitar <laughs> there's a lot of uh thumb slapping the the body okay, uh, let's see um give me give me a um will willpower no um like a intelligence to see how much you can figure out on okay. the fly and art Intelligent art. Okay. That is a 12. Okay. Oh. They're humoring you. But you can tell they're like, this isn't great. I'm just in the back of his head, Jack's like, if they'd asked Fogarty, played him some Fogarty. Yeah, that like they still think you're cool. They're just honestly they they think it's a little funny how much you try to like impress them with your guitar. But they're also they're also like he's cooler than our last youth pastor, so And he's got a bike. And he's yeah, they really like your dirt bike. <laughs> so um once the the food bank um you know, meeting out of the um, 
rations that's not the right word um like once you've distributed that's the word once you've distributed the food and everything um you know everyone has gone either to you know the actual service or back to their houses or whatnot um you're left with the rest of the day and i want to ask the scoobies do you include jack in your um not in your group text but in your like he was involved in getting helping you get the papers from orville so yeah i can kick him some gas money for that but yeah is not inclined to include jack or danny or anybody new in anything right now personally not in the clubhouse but we, are we have an adjacent. active mission <laughs> exactly jack is extra reinforcement if we need him at the moment <laughs> okay is how, ash, is how ash feels at least Sorry, Bison, you might not do much this round. That's okay. I think um, Jack would probably spend the afternoon or whatever time is there scooping. Um, he would probably um, do some more uh, busking, talk to some of the local vets who are homeless because, well, it's <laughs> it's the VA. Uh, and just trying to, like, you know... Have you seen this person? You know, are they still around? Um, have you guys seen anything weird? You know, are you staying safe at night? You know, just doing what Jack does. Okay, um, make me make me like a willpower notice roll. Okay, willpower notice. That's a nine. Okay. Um, you try to sort of get, you know, the word on the street as to who might have been, you know, maybe not showing up lately or how, you know, the lay of the land is in terms of like, you know, what are the what are the rules of these streets? What how do you, you know, what do you do to stay safe? Like you said, you know, asking, you know, are you getting enough food? Are you staying safe at night and stuff? What are the things that they do to stay safe? How do you survive in this town? That kind of thing that would help you figure mm -hmm. out like what vampire activity might be like and stuff like that. Um and I'd say about, there... sorry, just the the money he makes busking is what he uses to help these guys like, you know, you know, grease the palms a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. tons of money but you know every every person can usually get a sub you know something mm -hmm. um so you know you you do make your your donations and stuff and you do your good faith check-ins but um you're just not getting a lot of information this time there's you know your your usual sources are you know not around today and stuff um and, you know, the, the street's a little deserted today it's sunday everyone's kind of just chilling in their houses or at the shelter um so if if jack's okay doing that for the rest of the day we're gonna we're gonna hop back to the scoobies okay. so julian is in his office it's about it's about 2 p.m. He's hunched, not hunched over, but he's like leaning on a table in the middle of the room, sort of hanging over like three different books that are open in front of him. I'll make sure to put down all my uh, liberated documents somewhere out of the way. Maybe make uh, a mind hunter circle in the other room. Okay. And wait till everyone gets there. Let uh, let Julian talk about uh, 
is find us. You show up with uh, pizza, breadsticks, a couple two liters. Uh, Ash rolls in with like a tray of coffee, but also like in one hand, I have mysterious unlabeled cans here um, from yesterday, but um, <laughs> you know, kind of double fisting like energy drinks, you know, mm -hmm. so in this hand is double fisting energy drinks. And in this hand is a tray of coffee for everybody else. Plus one for them. <laughs> good, good, so. good plan. <laughs> yeah so like no food because they know they're pretty sure that either yay or cheryl will bring food um they're not big on the food thing sometimes it's just caffeine always right now. always caffeine <laughs> always caffeine yeah so um once everyone's there julian kind of no not uncharacteristically he's not like a stuffy british man <laughs> he was just trained by them um he goes As and he gets... loves to tell us <laughs> Because you never seem to get it into your heads. Um, he goes over, takes a slice of pizza, and starts, um, he doesn't touch the books, because grease and books, no. Um, but he, he leans back on his desk, and he goes, I honestly don't know how the Alice's think they're going to do this. Because... Based on all of the research I could find, alchemy and science don't mix well. It just doesn't, like, no wonder it's taken them almost 75 years with no success because they're intrinsically opposed. Every sire would be a failure. Like, sure, they look like they'd be getting closer, but... There would never seem to be like a peak to the amplification, so to speak. So I don't I I I don't know how the hell they think they're gonna achieve this. And he's just like puzzling as he takes a bite of pizza. Well, maybe it's not necessarily an amplification of effects. I mean, it could just be, you know, science lowers this level or you know makes some the body more vulnerable to something that alchemy can do or vice versa i suppose i mean either way we're gonna find them and give them holy water baths obviously just... i i just don't understand I want to know where they're getting their information. If they haven't been able to go out in the daytime in three quarters of a millennia, that's a millennia century, how do they how do they get what they need? Money. You can pay people to do things at night. And if they're Get smart me. enough they're you know sire some younger vampires who know how to use the internet even if they don't understand it themselves you know just wake up great get on the google I and mean, that's the google okay <laughs> <laughs> channeling a little i don't know vampire boomer there um <laughs> boomers Yep, yeah, boomers. boomers. There you go. <laughs> they they might have um, a benefactor that worked for Orville and and continued some sort of organization. Maybe they've been uh, funneling some money through other pockets. Maybe they've led to some. Every once in a while, they lead to some breakthrough, some research that is of valuable to the mainstream industrial chemical manufacturers and. Maybe they get kickbacks. There's seventy can always years talk to other people. Yeah. Seventy years of compound interest investments. I mean, if you've got a bunch of vampires under you, you can drive down property value somewhere pretty quickly. Buy up the property, remove the vampires, turn it around, gentrify the area, and you've 
made a lot of cash and property value alone. By virtue of being alive for 70 years and uh, not having to deal with anybody taking your inheritance, you're going to be quite wealthy. Yep. And back when you could actually afford to buy land. We're not going to get into this today. <laughs> <laughs> He just kind of sighs for a moment. Like, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Maybe after we deal with the vampires, we can deal with the greater evil, which is economic inequality in America today. Anyways, uh, she's going <laughs> to spread out all the documents and go, I have, we have two different tracks of information. We have financial records that are going to go over uh, all the comings and goings of the money through Orville to see whether or not they ended up funding university research and who signed off on that documentation. And then I believe that uh, Ye gathered all um, human resources complaints and other 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 conversations or, or firings. So if there's any disgruntled employees or any uh, cases where someone were to uh, have a disagreement, hopefully it was documented. It was the 70s, but people still uh, got their got their panties twisted, I believe. Could we look into, um, I'm not great at this, but see if the, that company still holds any patents or if they had patents uh, that lapsed and another company possibly picked them up? If they um, would have expired by now, but yeah, absolutely. We can look up all of their chief scientists and see which patents they signed off to uh, signed off to the company and whether or not... Uh, those people are still publishing or, or, or if they're still alive, see if we can find someone that we can squeeze. Okay. Good at squeezing. Uh, <laughs> of course, um, the one week I don't have an actual straw, you know, Ash is just, you know, propped up on the back of a chair as they usually are. Just <laughs> like watching, <laughs> watching the research and was like, okay, so, uh, where do we squeeze? That's that's what we're going through all this to try and find out. I I mean yeah, but like Cheryl, make me um make me an intelligence notice check as you go over these papers. I'd like to go over all the financial statements and use my wildcard ability finance slash business. In addition sure. to those checks. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll go over the human resources stuff. Keep not rolling. Um Yeah, um, yay, make me another intelligence uh notice roll. That'll be a twelve. Twelve, okay. Um on a first scan, nothing looks out of the ordinary it looks pretty on the level you can you can keep looking into it um i'll just write you're... down who's had sign and authority for discretionary projects just not necessarily um figuring out what's what's out of place but at the very least i'll get a short list of, of who controlled the purse strings over the course of the company yeah okay so you you get in a list of like three supervising managers and one like top manager um if you uh what do you choose to do with those like anything at all right now or i'm gonna wait till the uh the empaths <laughs> Uh, look into the the other documentation. I got a thirteen. Okay. Yeah, thirteen. Okay. Um, you. I mean, there's you know, female harassment complaints out the wazoo that no one seemed to uh, pay any attention to. Um, and eventually, it doesn't look like there are many female employees left by the time this company went under um but there was one uh employee who um and maybe this maybe the fact that they were a female contributed to why this was never followed up on but they did notice that um 
one of the more I the only word I know is like tenured um scientists just was acting very strange in terms of like he switched to night shift and then their shifts overlapped a little bit and he started looking really like weirdly at her um she felt very uncomfortable around him and she would come back for her day shift and she could swear something went missing but everyone said that nothing was missing like she felt like she was getting gaslit basically um it's it's kind of this like big complaint letter to the company in general but those are like the parts that you can pick what out was, that kind of pinpoint what was the name of that scientist did she specifically call him out um she lists him as uh mr mcclintock mcclintock does that name sound familiar to any of us in like our no. like looking through paperwork but like have we seen it before in the paperwork um actually cheryl has cheryl mr um uh, uh stephen mcclintock mcclintock um is listed as one of the supervising managers all righty we're getting somewhere we are yeah. Um, can I take the names of? I'm gonna take the names of some of the other. Or Ye is gonna take the names of some of the other complaining uh, women of the time and try and look them up and see. Uh, you know, did they actually just leave and live? You know, healthy and happy, productive lives, or did they mysteriously vanish? Uh, make me. Are you using is a computer look search? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe... yeah. <laughs> um the intelligence Google. Udo, intelligence or perception you can probably find them in directory so i'll say perception notice perception demand, demand if i aid you in your in your google search of course google away or sorry not notice perception computers Maybe. oh oh that, that changes my role slightly a lot Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Only just a little. Come on. Only just a little. No, no, definitely a lot. Ye is Ye, Ye can turn on the uh, computers and like use them basically, but he is not going to the dark web or anything dark like web. that. Dark web. Listen, just uh just go to a McDonald's parking lot at like 3 a.m. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I absolutely will not. <laughs> Ten. Um and that and, was uh really good role <laughs> yeah it's when, a when really Ye, good role when Ye started when Ye started i went oh i actually shared a, a macro that i made for, to help with identifying people because i rolled a 15 all okay. right okay um let me I feel like ash myself. is just in the background like ooh, shiny let me come <laughs> like cheryl, cheryl says i shared a macro and ash is just like oh what now <laughs> <laughs> um so you actually find that um, the majority of the women, yeah, quit or um, got hired somewhere else. But um, some of them, the like younger ones, especially like some interns. Like co-ed age at the time? Yes, like co-ed age interns um, seem to sort of drop off the planet. He's going to take down all those names just be like, yeah, this is this is just more of a connection. A bunch of co-ed age uh, interns just kind of vanished. Many of them after looks like complaining to HR about harassment and feeling uncomfortable. Uh, he's especially going to look up the fate of the woman who wrote the letter. Because mm -hmm. that seems like the kind of thing that a vampire would definitely be like, oh, oh hell no, you didn't. That goes on my permanent record, and I don't die, so that's a permanent record. <laughs> okay, um, give me one more, um, because you're already doing the computer stuff, so just give me a perception notice roll. Okay, that's, that's better. Ooh, 15. Okay, yeah, so you find that she 
was absolutely fired um, for what looked like ridiculous trumped up false accusations. Um, it's kind of like it it seems like they turned her accusations back on her and made it look like she was trying to frame uh mcclintock um the ultimate gaslighting yeah yeah exactly like this place is full of gaslighting it's a toxic environment for sure Um, now it's a burned out husk but yeah (laughs) uh it was it was fire lit for a while (laughs) um it was gaslit until they turned the the main off yeah (laughs) Um, All right. What what's her what's her name and uh, and yeah. Her name us. is um, Maria Herrera. Herrera. Oh, and she was a minority at that time. That's no good for yeah. uh, multiple levels. Bad look. Bad look. There's nothing she could have done. Mm-hmm. Did did she just vanish off the face of the earth too? She had um. She had so yes, but she had a family who looked for her like vehemently um for a long time, but they never did find her. Oh, I don't want to disturb that family. There's nothing that they could tell us that would be useful at this point, I think. If he and any of them could even be convinced to talk about their aunt's disappearance from 70 king years ago. Well, this was uh, this was closer. This is fifty years ago, 40, right? Fifty or 50. Oh, 40, yeah. 50. Okay. If This was the seventies. Then we have uh, a bit of a closer 70s, connection. This this, this uh, McClintock. <laughs> does he have any uh, accreditations and in, in any papers, or is is there any record of him being on an employee registrar after Orville? Do they move on to another financier? Uh, he actually, um, died, like, ironically, like, (laughs) um, yeah, died shortly after his retirement, which happened about two years before Orville went out, or... The timelines get fuzzy because Orville was going out for like a long time. So it like the retirement and the sort of steady decline of Orville kind of overlap each other. He did like a soft retirement. Got a parachute while he still did. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so we got a vampire scientist. Need to to see if he it picked up any property if we can track his purchases or his credit or anything did he buy anything before he died or did he leave any descendants uh, yeah he what, what does his obituary say he was weird alive. neck marks yo <laughs> he there's was alive no now he's evidence not. of him yeah. uh, is there a photo of Mr. McClintock yeah, he just looks like an old dude. He um his time at Orville was um he was older when he worked at Orville and then um unfortunately did die because you suspect he's not dead, um around the time that Orville became defunct. He um he didn't leave behind any successors or anything. He was a confirmed bachelor and he basically um, lived, you know, the academic's life. Confirmed bachelor. Sorry. Um, (laughs) She's going to kind of pivot and go, does that mean that the state took care of his bodies in if he didn't have any any benefit like he didn't have anybody that took took his effects or was he just declared dead there is an obituary but you uh make me one last 
perception notice. Yeah, I'm going to go to isheadead.com. Are they dead? <laughs> oh, right. We've established just that that's a previously. website. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is a 14 on are they dead.com and it should be updated it's 50 years ago so they've yeah. had a while yeah. to update this website um there is a death certificate but it's surprisingly bland like a little a little more vague than death certificates normally are he died of right. death <laughs> cause of death not being alive anymore like, sudden stop of brain and heart activity like you know how there there's like there's technically no such thing as natural causes because there's always a, a an actual cause. Um they mm. it literally says natural causes. Hmm. Actually All in right. the seventies that wouldn't be out of place. Natural causes in the seventies. So it's just it doesn't give you any kind of further information. Like, but the obituary is is we're looking for that information that whoever wrote something personalized or does it just say uh it just says you know his age um you know where he got his you know doctorate and stuff and does he leave behind any relatives and... like i think chris said no no relatives no, he, right no yeah. Rel no yeah no kids, no partner, nothing. Uh, Ash is gonna um, pull out their phone and like take a picture of like the picture of McClintock and reverse image search it to see if that photo has like is anywhere else on the internet. Okay. Um, perception computers. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna. <laughs> This is gonna be great. <laughs> Look up the mortician. Look up the mortician that signed the death certificate. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, on arethedead.com or no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at the name and I'm gonna see oh, okay. other death certificates that they've they've uh, written. We're rolling with a five. Rolling with a five. Uh, a whole the guy five. Is so the guy is so generically old man looking that you just like it pulls Almost up stock photos she gets, like... she gets so she gets one she gets one return are they dead.com <laughs> yeah. classic great great yeah. uh ash will be like oh my god okay um this guy can't be dead no way he's actually dead so oh. how do we find him? Yeah, that's the thing. Renfields aren't actually a thing. Just it was that one episode. Renfield Xander does actually Xander does get Renfield in Renfield yes. in an episode. He does. He does. Yeah, but they're not he eats eats the bugs and everything. They're not mm. a general thing, and you're not there. Quiet you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not here, Bison. I'm tired of being everybody's butt monkey. <laughs> what? He's just like hiding, like peeking <laughs> over from a window. Go back to busking. Just David oh. Tennant like just more people need to heal bad renditions of Steeler's Wheel. Just go. Um you have more Wonderwall to play. Go ahead. <laughs> I actually oh. totally lost what I was going to say there. Oh man, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, but yeah, no, he's Renfield's gaze is gonna be like the 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 idea of human servants generally isn't actually a thing. Most vampires aren't disciplined enough to string somebody along for more than a day or two. Older vampires maybe, but the idea Older that vampires. somebody could be you know, fed a little blood and put under their control and psychically controlled. No, no. But isn't that what we're dealing with? Isn't that well, not with people. There's not really a layer of people with these these with these eugenicist fuck buckets. They're um, they've got they've got like sired vampires and vampires who maybe believe in their vision, but normal people. I mean, you could bribe somebody to do something for you for a little while, but they're not under control and they're not any more reliable than somebody you just gave 20 bucks off the street to go, you know, grab you a paper or whatever. But Plus, 
people who know about vampires pretty quickly learn that vampires don't believe in actually keeping their word in general because it's much more convenient to just kill and eat somebody if you got a meal and your task done. I think it's possible that uh, that these vampire eugenicists might actually think that they're they've created some sort of world or some sort of fictitious existence. Maybe they're inspired by, by Bram Stoker. Maybe they think that they can do something like that. Maybe they're, you know, classic evil. The original evil. No, I, hmm. I, I think it's actually probably worse. I think they're true believers that they're actually making the world a better place for vampire kind. The kind of people who can mm. justify anything because their goal is noble and pure and anyone who stands against them obviously is against progress or just can't see the truth. Okay. Well, we have that one gentleman. We we have we have a number of people that we would like to get some investigation into. Did you say that you knew where the third dagger was, Ash? Yeah, well, we should we should probably circle back to that. <laughs> Um, Julian drops his pizza. Third, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Julian drops his like second piece of pizza. He's like, I'm sorry, what? Right. Um, so Julian, uh, um, I guess, well, ugh, all of you, I resting yesterday, and Ash kind of puts it in quotes, but they recognize the need for it. Um, I was taking a nap-ish on my deck, and I had this really weird sort of vision experience thing. Um, Before we get to the dagger, though, uh, I should let you know that Estia is okay, and she came to see me. And I know it sounds crazy, um, but it's not. And I touched her and I held her and she's okay. She's reading her afterlife away. Yes, dear. And she says we helped. I'm glad she could visit you. I hope she visits you. And Ash, like, pointedly looks at Yay. Um, she didn't have a crush on me, so we'll uh, see how how likely that is. Uh, director, mm-hmm. is empathy two ways? No, you can feel them, but they can't, like, feel yours. Okay. They would I mean, have to be an empath case. to feel it. Well, I mean, in the it, case it, of it, Yay! In the yeah. case but, of you and Yay, yes. Yeah, but but I, I wasn't really asking for Yay. I was hoping to ask for Cheryl. No, uh, no. Cheryl would um, not be able to feel your emotions or anything. Okay, okay. Um, also, for everybody new who's watching, hi, friends. Um, empathy is an actual power here. Just FYI. Um, it's like real life. <laughs> like, actual power. Yes, yeah, just like real life. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Ash will kind of just like reach for Ye's hand and like hover their hand over Ye's with like not touching without <laughs> you know but like you know like silently yeah. asking um yeah, so yeah. that Ye, Ye can feel take their hand and yeah and it's kind of like a weird like <laughs> moment but uh yeah. so that Ye can feel at least what Ash was able to feel from Estia and like Ash will look at Cheryl too and just be like she's she's okay. And I'm sorry that you can't see her, but she is. He was going to look uh, back and forth in the emptiness of the room and then kind of like the reflections. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you do a I- seance if you want at a future date if y'all are comfortable with that. But, we could. Yes, yeah. special. We'll need uh <laughs> we'll need a lot of protections. And we seance might... is done by regular people are rarely <laughs> actually inviting in unpleasantness, but seance is done by those actually touched 
by the occult is might invite some way more dangerous. <laughs> oh, I'm also way more familiar. likely to actually get you ants. No, oh, yeah, I suppose they would. They would be. Did you yeah. and Wicca Wicca do a seance? He seems like he would be interesting to do a seance. I just with. Uh... just be like scratching the plant chat. Just... Where are you? <laughs> I just had a, a great time when I was in middle school, uh, scaring mm. off, scaring off uh, some boys and some girls that were a little full of themselves. But right, as long uh, as you, uh, <laughs> as long as you, uh, you know, bless the house and purify it, <laughs> and uh, kind of go through some of the legwork, I've had to. I've had to save a couple homes and convince someone that they weren't possessed. Before. She's just going to give Shoro a look like, we're going to come back to that later. Yeah. Anyway. Sure. We'll circle back dagger. to that, but right now we're circling back yeah, to the dagger. dagger. We've got a whole uh, circle of things to circle to, and right <laughs> yeah, now we're going to do lot. dagger. Maybe some wine for that it's one. It's circle Cheryl. time. But, uh, so <laughs> actual donuts kind of... all around the plot. Right. Yeah. Uh, disentangle their hand from Ye's. Take a deep breath. Not at Julian. Because Julian was part of this conversation too. So like they want to make sure that Julian knows too. Um, and then be like... Julian is paying attention. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then just kind of be like, anyways uh, yeah. During this, I might have borrowed some of Cheryl's brain cells. Thanks for that, by the way. Um, I realized that if I thought of somebody, I could see them. And so I just kind of thought of the dagger and suddenly there i was he's gonna um, get up and kind of look around cheryl's hair like he's looking for a little <laughs> seam or a <laughs> incision and what what did you what did you see i i couldn't so i thought of my dad and then i thought of yay and i saw you and yay doing research and all this stuff and if I know people, I could see them more clearly. But the person with the dagger, I couldn't see that clearly. So I guess I don't know them as well or know them at all. Um, but they were pacing around an apartment of sorts. And does Ash remember any specific details about the apartment that might seem relevant? Um, it was a very dingy, like, right. studio apartment. Um, right. Very, like if you remember the one that faith lived right. in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um, so like what like a warehouse converted to a yeah almost, okay yeah not quite an angel crypt but like a faith warehouse apartment. no yeah gotcha. like a faith warehouse <laughs> just like real real nasty yeah. okay so um ash will just kind of be like it was really run down uh the walls were kind of peeling one of the windows was broken there was cardboard over it to keep it out and the person was just like pacing back and forth it didn't seem like a good part of town if it even was town i realize that's not helpful but it's a little was bit it, it was it wrapped up was it by itself on the table or was it in a pot of other stolen things uh director it was kind of it, on the table was, right yeah it was it was, on the table. Uh, it was yeah. like by itself on the table yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, let me see if i can help with this um Julian, can I see our dagger? Yes. Uh, he goes to the drawer and unlocks it and pulls out the box and brings it over to the table, clears the books away, unlocks the box and opens it. And he's like, just don't touch it. Well, I... Uh can you can you then put it on the, the floor for me? Because I'm going to need to make a salt circle here. Okay. Um, he takes a like a. Um... I'll float it in the air. Sure. Yeah. 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 Cheryl can just float it. All right. Um, once it's safely on the floor, he's gonna dig into his bag and pull out, then pretty much ever present at this point, thing of Morton salt. Uh, and he's gonna bake a circle. It's got to be kind of a big circle because he's got to be in it. Um, with him and the dagger, uh, and he's going to. Say, ask, um, Cheryl, can you, do we have a, a big map of the city that you can kind of wheel in front of me? We could, um, do we want to, I think that's actually a great idea. I'll, I'll go over to our uh, whiteboard that I have it currently stapled to, or the, okay. the poster board, and I'll wheel that out 
make sure there's room for me and Ash in this circle as well. Right, Let's try I, I have something I want to try out. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Ye will expand the circle, which takes his whole fucking thing the, of salt. Put the salt around the perimeter of the office. <laughs> There's the entire office. Yeah, both of the floor. Julian's like, oh, God, that's going to take so long to clean up. A janitor soon he'd be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? First it was confetti, and then it was post-it notes everywhere, and now and it's And some salt, string, and now and it's salt. String. Yep, but then Ye is going to take it. for this. Dig in his bag again and pull out a laser pointer. They're actually really good for classes and for stray cats. Because he likes cats. And uh, he's going to sit down, cross-legged in the circle. Gesture for whoever's going to join to join. He's like, there's room for you too, Julie. And I made it extra big. If you want to be a part of this, if you just want to observe, um, take down notes or whatever. I feel like someone should observe in case something goes wrong. All right. I find your uh, lack of faith disturbing. Not Ash. wrong, but disturbing. Anyway. I find your references annoying. Ash, um, <laughs> grab me. Okay. Ash will and... take Cheryl's hand. Hey, Cheryl, uh... you grab myself and yep, you and, grab uh, Cheryl's other Ash's hand. hand. And Ash's so hand. So the two of you can sense what I'm sensing right now. Yeah, I was just about to say. Okay. Two empaths touching Cheryl no, at the no. same time. <laughs> and you can sense what the other one's feeling right now. Well, I was going to have one hand free to use the laser pointer to hopefully hone in where on the map I might be sensing your this. Mouth. Just, just just, just Gave <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Pull, get some uh, a, a, athletic tape out of his bag. Remember, you know, going for his uh, kinesiology and uh, tapes the button down. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. It'd be funny if he puts it in and reaches for a lighter away. Oh, uh, he would have, but his You're hands really... are full of oh. hands. Yeah, that's hands. <laughs> hands. Touching hands. <laughs> Ash you, you mentally, have. mentally goes, shut up, yay. <laughs> you could have had, uh, like, one of your hands free, and Ash could have just grabbed your shoulder. You didn't need to put it in your mouth, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> so very buffy, though. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Maybe what's going part on here? Xander, Cheryl? part angel is how I appreciate him. <laughs> All right, Eddie, what's, your, what's Cheryl's plan here? So my plan... Uh, oh, so, well, let's let's go through Jacob's plan um, first. Oh, I plan was to uh, contact <laughs> the powers of E, and the, I can find a connection between an I here and an I there that they are very mystically in time. All right, I would like to piggyback off that. And try and uh, do a ritual, uh, an empathy slash uh, sharing of, of minds ritual. It's not something in the book, uh, but Cheryl would like to create an interconnectivity in this friendship triangle using the laser pointer and also one of, of a couple of Cheryl's spells. She's going to try and. Uh, bastardize those one you guys that, that helps get to know each other real well, real we well, real well. Like, yeah. Empathy um, and the Vulcan mind melt going on here, but, oh, but yeah. essentially try and use uh, the laser pointer and uh, uh, Cheryl has two spells. She has find out where all the demons are, and she has lead me to a creature. So try and do a bastardized version of the combination of those two spells, and try and triangulate the three of us the location of this figure on this in this dagger and try and have this constant reoccurring loop that just feeds into itself she's going to try and just nudge using the supernatural and, and have the two empaths kind of steer her if she's going the wrong way they can sense where she's going they they tell her to turn left or or, or go further north or south or whichever Navigational ways she tries to search for this figure. We all try to search for this figure together. But that does also mean that Cheryl is opening herself up 
to two empaths. One of which has half a soul. Maybe a full soul. Jury's still out. One of which ha- potentially has like hundreds of souls inside of them. Well, Avatar shit. Well, uh, Cheryl <laughs> just thinks it's cool, a cool this. idea and does not cool realize idea. the mechanics and the complexity <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah, of course, of course. Of she course. wants to feel. She wants to feel useful in this situation. Cheryl so she's going to try feel and what the feelers feel. <laughs> yeah, she's she's trying to make it a, a full circuit as opposed I to just feel uh, what the empaths feel. <laughs> I want to see. You want to see them crying? <laughs> <laughs> that's also what they've done stumbling around with tissues in their, what are those called? hands, hands. <laughs> what that's do they feel? <laughs> is it all real? <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, we're not I'm going for a musical episode God here so. veal. <laughs> <laughs> once anyway. more with feeling guys <laughs> <laughs> see we can do a musical episode <laughs> anyway um so, as you begin to try to combine these two spells, your your mind is a whirl with translations and reconfiguring the elements of these spells into you know, new purposes that have to be, you know, transfigured and combined and recombined and chopped up and and almost bastardized in a way because there is no written spell for this. And you, you may have been thinking about something like this, but you haven't put in all of the time that would have been necessary to properly make a safe spell. So I need Cheryl Mm -hmm. to make me a um, willpower, occultism, plus sorcery, but you're going to be at a minus three. Okay. Can I add, since Cheryl has tried to open her mind to Ash and Ye, that Ash and Ye are allowed to add their occultism to Cheryl's? I was literally going to say that. Okay. And the and the willpower. GM brain. Yeah. Yeah. So um <laughs> uh Ash and Ye also make willpower occultism roles, but you guys are also inexperienced with this. So and you also don't have that knowledge that you would need so what you guys are also going to be at a disadvantage so you guys are going to have a minus two are we uh because this what yay is doing without involving cheryl spell is something he's done before which is not a spell yeah, so you'll have just... a separate role later okay. okay so then minus two that is a 14 for Ash with that minus two. 12. That is a 15 with that minus three. Okay. That's... Go team go team unprepared. <laughs> right? They are the true <laughs> improv Scoobies. Yep. <laughs> so you guys with your empathy combined with Cheryl's really honestly terrifying levels of power um you you reach out with this kind of almost combined consciousness as your emotional minds meld for a moment and Cheryl remind me exactly what the intention of this spell is I'm trying to recreate either a locate person or a locate item spell trying okay. to um I'm, I'm i'm trying to create a bastardized thing that they'll answer a lot of our questions um 
Uh, we keep finding that we are looking for a very specific person. We know their name and what they look like, but we can't do it mechanically. So Cheryl's trying to create a new spell that requires uh, the triangulate of all three of, of, of the powers of the Scoobs to, to, to be able to do this. Maybe once a season, maybe once every arc, who knows. Okay. Um, yay. Make me... Make me, let me check something really fast. Make me a willpower influence roll. Right. I selected you specifically. You do good for me. 14! Which is literally the best I could roll with a hat. Okay. That's a go. So, so what happens is you all feel this power coursing through you. And as it does, yay, you feel the you feel you feel this force move your head down and the laser bounces off of the knife and onto the map at a very unsavory part of town not the same part where the Oracle plant was, but it's on the other side of the city where there are a lot, a lot of vampires. Blowing in the air is my iPhone 13, whatever they're on now, and just snaps a picture. So, none of us have to move. And then, Cheryl, your spell kicks in. And the knife starts to float. And then it flies to the board and stabs in that same spot. And there is, there is a flash of power. Everything kind of gets rustled. And you're all left kind of like with like sort of lights in your eyes a little like bit. Like flashbang type of Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cheryl, you feel this crazy rush when this magic goes slightly rogue, but it's it felt good. <laughs> it felt really good. You're still touching Ooh. me while, while No, I'm, not while Dark Willow Arc. <laughs> If they're still if they're still in contact with Cheryl, um, yeah, I don't know how much empaths empaths learn besides like surface thoughts, right? Or surface feelings, emotions and um, feelings. Yeah, emotions. And yeah, feelings. And yeah, it yeah. Depends on the a, level of empathy too. A lot of like Stalin like vibes going into this. Every once in a while, there's like a brief flash of like, okay, and, like SG is watching. Let's try and do this properly and like do this okay. That'd be nice for her. Like, kind of like envisioning that she's chilling in the corner and being very like serious and stoic. And then when the light goes on, she's like, okay, thank God. And then the dagger flashes to the wall. And the most like, like she just, yeah, she just took a deep drag of a cigarette. Just that amazing, instantaneous, just satisfaction. Don't smoke, kids. Just that, <laughs> such a great, like, like just like that craving of, of itching that spot in the back of her mind. And just this immediate, just like, I can do it. Don't know what it is, but that immediate feeling of like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Um, you guys are brought back to reality by a bing. Oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> 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 
I was listening to that yesterday. Anyway, oh, um, I was rapping that to my fiance yesterday. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julian turns around because he recognizes that as the like notification sound from his um, computer, and he goes and looks at what just popped up, and then read something and he looks up at you guys and goes guys we got a ping on something about the gem of amara and that's where we drop the curtain we can drop the curtain on you i knew it (laughs) you sure (laughs) yeah Uh, that's that's uh, where we'll drop it um so with that being said Wowie. <laughs> Good Ooh. sesh. We Ooh. did a sesh. lot. Yeah. Wowie we mama. <laughs> um, Good juxtaposition of serious shit and very not. Yeah. Which is A plus Buffy. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'm adding a new spell to my my my, my inventory list. It's gonna be locate <laughs> locate creature locate objects slash locate creature. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Who's to say what the challenge is? Challenge rating I... spell level. Oh, I set uh, I set that at power level seven, and you guys crushed it. Nice. <laughs> it, I imagined like almost like you know in Charmed when the three of them work together, like that type mm-hmm. of like '90s witchcraft type of like. Yeah. The, yeah. The rule of three and. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're That's starting exactly to co- we're starting to coven right now, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the head witch. <laughs> We're just uh, borrowing from all yeah. the shows. Yeah. All the 90s, <laughs> all the shows. shows. All of them. Yep. All right. It's time for thank yous, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bat Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Bison. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you, Mana. You guys make this game amazing. And I look forward to playing it every single time. Um, even when I'm panicking, trying to think of what to do. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I, I had a great time tonight. Um, some of it was pure improv, but that's sometimes the best part. Um, Mm -hmm. I hope you guys had just as much fun or at least enjoyment, whether it's, you know, of the sad kind or not um hey sometimes uh, it hurts so did. good okay yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly come on baby uh, let it hurt so good, <laughs> good. oh we're all just very sweet you know it hurts so, so good, good. <laughs> um, thank you producer kevin yes uh thank you everyone in chat chat was yeah. popping off tonight yeah. i barely got a chance to read it um, thank you for the new subs. Oh yes, thank yeah. you. For the new I, I sent the link to some new friends, which is where they came from. So oh, love to, oh, thank love you, to new friends. friends. Love to new Yay. friends. And I have um, one thing, possibly two. Character art was by Hero Forge. The background was by Pixabay. Oh. <laughs> also, thank you, Director Chris. Thank you, Director Chris. As having welcome. you always. Yep, <laughs> yep always keep You're us entertained welcome. and on our toes. One of these uh, days. <laughs> what, what do you mean one of these days? <laughs> no, sorry. I was going to say one of these days. I'm just going to adapt this for TV. <laughs> <laughs> please pick up. Please green light us. Yeah. Please. <laughs> um, whoever, whoever sponsored Critical Role. <laughs> anyway. Um, and thank you to everyone who's watching in the future, be it, be it the VOD or on YouTube. If you made it this far, give the video a like, give the channel a subscribe, tell us what you think in the comments. We love to hear your comments. And last but never, ever, ever least, guys, please be nice to each other. Please. <laughs>